Hey guys, Twigs here. So we're going to be watching a Mtash video. So make sure to check out Mtash's video. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Definitely hit that like button for him and definitely check out his channel. Subscribe to him. He's a cool dude. Always uh, respect his opinion. But there is a specific reason that I want to check out his video for Weathering Waves. Because this man has been grinding Genshin Impact for a very long time, since pretty much the release of Genshin Impact. And he, over time, his opinion of Genshin Impact has evolved. He went from loving the game, which I, I still think in his heart he still loves the game. But what killed his passion for the game is basically the view that the, the devs and Hoyoverse themselves have for wanting to progress and evolve the game. And that's basically killed his passion for the game. And now this man, based on a tweet I saw him post out the other day, his, he's wanting Wuthering Waves to pop off. He's needing Wuthering Waves to pop off for the specific reason of competition. So I want to see his opinion about his honest thoughts on Wuthering Waves being the Genshin killer because I want to see exactly his thought process on all this. And then obviously get my take along the way. So here we go. Let's check out uh, Intash's video. But before we do, definitely hit that like and subscribe button for me. Hitting that like button helps get the video out there. And hitting that subscribe button helps us grow a community over here and helps us grow the channel. So if you can hit the like and subscribe button, I'd greatly appreciate it. So let's do this. Oh, you're looking for the Genshin killer. You've been searching it up on YouTube, and you're wondering if Wuthering Waves is it. Well, let me show you something right now. Oh, that's oh, cool. Oh, that's right. It's a motorbike boy. This game has some awesome music. This, this boss battle is pretty fun. In fact, pretty much all the boss battles in this game are super fun. Especially this one, because you're fighting a dude who's literally riding on a fucking flaming motorcycle like you'd expect from Ghost Rider from Marvel Comics. It's got some real cool attacks. It's got summons that you can pull in and battle enemies. Yes. It's got some interesting new takes on the gotcha game systems. 100. But is this going to be the Genshin killer? Let's have a chat. Let, let's have an honest chat about it. I want to go over some of the main systems. I want to go over some of the main things that I'm seeing. I want to go over the characters. I want to go over if this is something you should actually care about. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. Genshin Killer. Genshin's a good game. Like Exactly. That's what I was saying in the beginning of the video. Everyone knows Genshin's a good game. The issue is that it needs more. For the people that want Genshin. But let me explain one thing. When I started Genshin, I thought it was going to be more combat, more bosses. I thought that the Spiral Abyss was just the beginning. And they've built a game around minigames. Exactly. <laughs> that I remember when everyone got to the end game of Genshin Impact and realized that no, there is, there is nothing past the Spiral Abyss. And then when we got to the first Windbloom Festival, that's when it really hit. Wow, we, we literally get a whole event just centered around Mario Party games. It is not the game I thought it was going to be or expected. And there's a lot of people like me that are not happy with Genshin. Exactly. So for me, Wuthering Waves probably is the Genshin killer. But for people that like Genshin Impact and they like the story, it probably isn't. It probably won't have as good of a story. It probably won't have um, as deep of lore. But if you're into combat, if you want to fight, the vibe is, yeah, this is probably going to be better. And that's the thing. Genshin has a really good combat system. It's The mixing of elements is super cool. There's different, there is different ways to go about the gameplay whether you want to do hyper bloom or whether you want to do burgeon or you want to do uh, super conduct or anything of that sort like a uh, vape or melt there is team comps there 
And Genshin does have a very interesting combat system. It's just that they don't try to dive into it. It's it's like Spiral Abyss, and then the very rare combat events that occur, you'll get those. But they don't try to flush it out. They don't try to advance, uh, improve upon it. It's just, here's an interesting combat system. Here's the Spiral Abyss for if you actually want to act- do combat stuff. But now let's put up, let's let's pump out like 100 mini games that are like Mario Party for the rest of the year. And it's just like, for example, they added the uh, um, Arc Uzia combat, like, I say, I want to say like combat mechanic, but it's not really even a combat mechanic because it's practically not even necessary. But they added the Arc Uzia little mechanic for combat when Fontaine dropped. And who cares? <laughs> who really cares? I am sure. No one really even pays attention to that. And here's the reason why. Because if you're running, like, let's say, a Kaching, Yalan, Nahida, Hyper Bloom team, it doesn't matter if you stun it with Ark and Uzia, because it's going to die no matter what. It, It literally matters not popping that stun for Ark or Uzia aligned enemies. Because they will die... No matter what. And you can watch, go and watch tons of Spiral Abyss videos of fighting those enemies with Arc Uzi alignment. And none of those team comps are even accounting for that. They're just destroying the enemies. So even when, so it's like Genshin Impact and Hoyoverse are like throwing like little bits of things that kind of spice up the combat. But it doesn't really matter. It does not matter because they don't care to uh, build upon the combat for the game. And this is why everyone, like let's say myself and Imtash, are eyeballing Wuthering Waves because they do have a really good combat system. But there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of different things in the game that um, are very familiar. It's a gotcha game. With different characters. One under. And in order to ascend them, I need to use my energy and I need to get my stuff and I have to put my effort in and my, my time in to ascend them. And there's so many characters that I can uh. send before I run out of resources. Same thing goes with the weapons. There's only so many weapons I can get. And there's artifact type sets. This yep. is a really cool system. Like It is. I understand there's going to be some, some differences. If you want a new game to play, if you want something to do, I think that for a few months, Wuthering Waves will be the Genshin killer. It will be the Honkai Star Rail killer because everyone's going to jump in on the hype. But it can only be the Genshin killer long term if it is actually good long term. And I see what he's saying here. Honkai Star Rail, eh, probably not because Honkai Star Rail. So let me let me flush this out. The reason people are focusing in on Star Rail and comparing it to Genshin Impact is because they're under the same umbrella. They're under a Hoyoverse. So whatever Hoyoverse decides to throw towards Star Rail and the Star Rail team decides to do for Star Rail, people are like, well, if this is in Star Rail, why can't it be in Genshin? And so the excuses are for why it's not in Genshin. It's laughed at because there is pretty much no excuse. All the quality of life updates, all the in-game stuff that we see in Star Rail, we should be seeing it in Genshin Impact. And that's why everyone compares it to. But that's only because it's under a superficial reason. Weathering Waves, on the other hand, is going to be directly compared to Genshin Impact. It's because it's a competitor. It is not under the same umbrella. This is someone... This is a team that's trying to directly compete with Genshin Impact. So you have literally a anime, action adventure, open world, gotcha game, literally under the same category in every possible way, trying to compete with Genshin Impact. So this is a case where it is definitely worth being critical and comparing the two. In Star Rail's case, it may take some 
uh, retention, some player the player base from Star Rail, just because Star Rail shares a community with Genshin Impact due to them being under the same umbrella. So there will probably be some people uh, leaving Star Rail to play Wuthering Waves just because they happen to also be Genshin Impact players. But because Star Rail is a turn-based RPG and you don't get the same type of gameplay that you would in Wuthering Waves, people are going to probably go back to Star Rail during their downtime with Wuthering Waves. But there is a chance that, don't get me wrong, there'll be people that will probably go back and forth playing Wuthering Waves and Genshin Impact, but there are going to be players who are going to play Wuthering Waves and go, I think Wuthering Waves is more up my alley. I think I'll just stop playing Genshin and play Wuthering Waves. And that is the fear that the Genshin Impact team is going to have with Wuthering Waves. If we unlock all these things and the characters are amazing, if 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 the map opens up and there's awesome things to do, if these bosses just keep being amazing, if the music keeps being amazing, if they keep adding challenges and things to do, this game could be the, the killer. But it is also not revolutionary in a lot of ways. It is a gotcha game. And if you don't like gotcha games, you're not going to like this game more than Genshin. If you do like gotcha games, I think this one has a lot of potential. If you do like combat, I think this one has a lot of potential. But I want to go over some of the main stuff here. That's kind of my long TLDR is it's going to be good. I think it'll steal some market share for a short period of time. But it's up to them to steal it long term. So let's yes. talk about it. The map, the world, looks pretty good. Yeah, I agree. We've got some areas that have more color than others. This is, you know, True. one example. Let's teleport somewhere else so you can get a vibe that not everywhere looks exactly the same. I think that overall, it's good enough for me. I look at the water. I look at this world. I am happy with it. I think that Genshin is a lot more vibrant. That is for sure. But I am not going to cry about this world and how it looks. Okay, so let me touch on this point. So, yes, um, Kuro Games, that's the developers for Weathering Waves, they have an aesthetic vibe they like to go for, which is to add more kind of like gray into the palette. They like things to kind of feel sort of um, monochromish. That's why I use the word gray. Whereas Genshin, like to use uh, Imtash's word, prefers vibrant colors. They try to really hammer in on that, like, feel that you were in an anime world and, like, you could literally take a camera to any part of the world, take a picture, and it would, and it would work as a portrait. And that is to the Genshin Impact team's credit. They, they do hammer in, like, ex, like part of exploration is making sure the areas feel memorable. And I will 100% give the Genshin Impact team credit for this. They hammer that in. They nail it. Exploration and world building and map design. The Genshin Impact team does great. They do absolutely great. This team, I think they do have some more work to do. And also keep this in mind. And keep this in mind for the rest of the video too. We are right now in a closed beta test. So everything that we're seeing in Weathering Waves at this moment is subject to change. It is subject to be improved on. So they could decide to take a considerable amount of time to improve any of this that we're talking about. So that is one thing that I think that the Weathering Waves team could work on is adding more to the map in the world to make it feel more, let's say, lively. As for the characters, I personally like the character models more than Genshin Impact in the sense I like the kind of modern style. But I don't think that every design is better than Genshin. No. You know, I don't look at every single character and I'm like, oh, they're just better. Some of them look pretty generic overall. They don't look amazing, but... I just like this art style, the sharper features, the more modern or masculine type features. I like it a lot more. I can agree. Uh, I agree to that halfway. There are designs that I do like of Genshin Impact. 
like let's say Raiden Shoguns, Ganyu's, Shinha, Yulon. And, that, and this is where my... I think I really like the more mature characters of Genshin Impact quite a bit. But that's also why I also like the characters in Wuthering Waves 2. I see a lot of uh, mature characters. Like, let's go back to uh, Baizi. Baizi looks that good. Every design is better than Genshin. You know, I don't look at every single character. Uh, I do like Chixia's. She kind of, Chixia kind of gives me uh, vibes of Yoimiya. Yo I'm like, oh, they're just better. Some of them look pretty generic overall. They don't look amazing. But I just like this art style. The sharper features, the more modern or masculine type features. I do. I really actually enjoy San Hua's character design. San Hua gives me like a more mature Ayaka vibe. And that's not just to say like, yeah, she's an ice character who uses a uh, sword. It's also because of like her design, the, the hairstyle. She just gives me a vibe of a more mature Ayaka. I like it a lot more, but I like everything I've seen so far. Uh, I'm really yeah. liking everything I've seen so far. Um, <laughs> I think that for me, I care about the kit and the stats and what they can do and a lot of the kits have quite a bit of nuance to them there's a lot of different things going on but to, 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 the, to that last point i think that's why i do enjoy the designs for weathering waves is just because the characters feel more mature don't get me wrong there are characters that are, are on the younger side like encore and this blonde blonde girls um i forgot her name but there are characters in Wuthering Waves that obviously are younger, and that's and that's not going to interest me. But I see, for the most part, a lot of mature characters in Wuthering Waves. Whereas Genshin, it's... I think there's more mature characters in Genshin, but I also feel like there's a, like too many like characters that could be on the younger side, or just are just not enjoyable to play just because I want to play as a character that looks like they could kick ass and be badass. Each character... That's why Raiden Shogun is probably one of my favorite characters and why I am also a fan of Kaching, Ayaka, Shinha, Ganyu, just characters that at least give off the impression or definitely just... 100% a more mature character. You know, some of them are counter characters. Some of them are fast attacking characters. Some of them, you need to use all your different abilities to make them pop off. And, and some of them are quick swap. Like, it, it's still just like every other gacha game. There's some characters that are going to be good. Some that are going to be bad. It, it, there's, it, like, honestly, what matters more for me is if I take this character and I take this weapon, are there cool things for me to fight and use it on? Am I going to be challenged? Am I going to care about the game? Let's chat about that. Just over here, straight ahead here, is the Abyss. Or or, or, or yeah. something like the Abyss. It's going to get harder and harder. Floors go deeper and deeper. You get rewards for completing it based True. on how quickly you do it. But it's pretty cool. That being said, they also start throwing in some bosses. And the rumor is, because I haven't unlocked yet, the bosses have different move sets or, or ad additional sets or additional phases. Um, but I haven't got there yet. I haven't unlocked all the different stuff. So that's pretty cool. There's also this hazard zone. So if we look at this right now, what's in game, there's like the basic floors here. So there's like, you know, four floors for each of yeah. these. And then we've got these ones here. That's another four floors each. There's also a roguelike system that I haven't quite unlocked yet. Um, don't know how hard it gets. Don't know how crazy it is, but there is a whole other system there. I cannot tell you if these systems will be the Genshin killer until I put a lot more time into them and play them. But most likely, it won't be revolutionary and crazy. And I, I can agree with that. Right now, I think Weathering Waves is just trying to take what's out there that does work and adapt it to their game. And so in this case, yes, we are looking at a system that is literally the Spiral Abyss. 
We even had that in Honkai Star Rail, but granted, those are those two games are under the same umbrella. Weathering Waves is just trying to take what works and apply it to their game. We need to see what they do over time or what there is that we haven't discovered yet in the game that is unique or is it at least a unique twist. It might be harder than Genshin Impact. Um, but if we start looking at like Endgame and, 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 and Genji Killer Revolutionary, I would say that Honkai Star Rail, the way they have continued to add new stuff. There was MOC, and then they added more MOC, and then yeah. they added Pure Fiction, the yeah. simulated universe, and then yeah. there's a new world, and then a new game mode that, that t turned it. The only way Withering Waves beats Genshin is if they take these systems they've already created and they just go more, another one, a different boss, add some something else, add a mechanic, add some depth. Um, because if it's just this, it's gonna, it's gonna feel the same. I run around, I, I do the world, and then every week I do my abyss or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? This is the wrong screen. This is the right screen. Um, and so if you want more Genshin, there is a situation where Wuthering Waves is just more Genshin. Or, 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 or like a similar vibe to Genshin. It's something to do in between. But if they can nail the bosses, like some of these bosses are so interesting to me. They're so cool. And... Um, if they can just continue to double down on these things and 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 make them uh, challenging and exciting and give me a reason to fight, that's cool. Character progression, all of this stuff is like identical to any of the other gacha games I've been playing. Um, yeah. The open world, this stuff is 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 pretty similar. They've got some good some good movement stuff here. I can do my own little movements and dashes and double jumps and glides. Yeah, it's I do enjoy similar. that a lot. The one thing I will say about the open world, though, is sometimes it feels a little bit sparse. Sometimes there's not as many enemies as you would like or as many little chests and things as you would like. But it's still a very similar vibe to Genshin Impact, to Tower Fantasy kind of thing. But I wanted to address this, okay? Um, overall, I think that this game, current state, yeah. is absolutely better than Tower Fantasy. And it's not even close. Oh, 100%. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Tower of Fantasy is a train wreck. Oh, I remember trying that game. That, don't get me wrong. I did like some of the gameplay of Tower of Fantasy, but character designs were just kind of mid. Open world felt mid and the fact that they tried to make it an MMO at the same time just made it super glitchy oh yes 100% Wuthering Waves is killing Tower Fantasy the only thing is, is that they just need to compete and consistently compete with Genshin Impact Tower Fantasy when the first within like the first hour or so I knew uh oh this game might be in trouble this game I said oh this game has some potential. I can tell right away with games, does it feel good? Does the movement feel good? Can I dash around? Can I do these different things? Does it feel fluid? Yes. Yeah. Does the combat feel interesting? Yes. Yep. This character functions different than this character, functions than this character, and I want to learn them all, and I want to test them all. I think it's really cool. But the one thing I didn't anticipate being so excited about is this system. So what is this? What is this right here? It oh, this system is great. I killed those enemies, and they have left behind an echo. This is essentially um, like a Pokemon-type system. I collect them. Boom. I've now collected these echoes. I could go in, and I can alter my echo choices. So, an echo is kind of like an artifact. or Yes. They've literally found a way to combine the artifact or relic system of Genshin or Star Rail and the just act of just taking out mobs and putting it together. And then on top of that, whatever enemy or that you put on the first slot, you can use its ability. That is, it's genius. 
It's absolutely genius. It gives you a reason to want to go out and farm and slay out enemies because you're going to potentially be rolling on an artifact. There is no artifact or relic domains. You just go and just take out enemies and you are potentially getting a roll on a artifact that that might that might be your new best in slot. It's great. It's genius. And the, and like I said, the fact that it even it gives you an extra ability is nuts. This was a genius system. For a relic, it's got different substats on it. All right? And each one, even if it's the same enemy, can have different substats. This oh, is, yes. This and what is attack. But the effect, the set effect, is going to be the same. Oh, he didn't notice. He didn't notice. Sometimes it won't. Look right here on this one. He's got Void Thunder, the Sonata effect. But on this one, Sonata effect, Aerogale. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes they won't have the same effect or ability. And that makes things just a little bit more interesting. This has defense. This has attack. But the effect, the set effect, is going to be the same. That being said, if we go in here, I've got to find a, a, an example of it really quickly. If we look at uh, this enemy, let's say, or, or this enemy. This is a Havoc Dread, Dreadmane. This is like a, a, a low tier one, okay? This is a low tier one doing 105 uh, damage. Look at this one. This one's doing 158 damage. So this oh, is a yeah. higher tier one. It's a leveled up one and stuff. The different rarities, you can just see in this one. This is a, a blue rarity one. This does three attacks. 231 damage. This one does 264 damage. So you can fight these enemies, get rarer versions with better substats potentially, and you can farm them up indefinitely. If I know it's I great. Go down here, and I was to go fight this boss, there's a boss down here. Okay. Even if I don't want to use my energy to fight this boss, I could still kill it and see if it'll uh, drop an echo, which is, I think it's pretty badass. So I could go all the way down here. I could start the boss fight. I could kill it. He's just chilling down there. And if he drops the echo, W, that's great. And if he doesn't, I can come back in 10 minutes and do it again or five minutes and do it again. And so while it's annoying needing energy to level up and ascend all your different characters and, and ascend all their weapons, one of the big progression points in the game is essentially free. Now, that doesn't mean infinite because if I look at this and okay. I want to upgrade this, there are resources to level up my um, my little wolf here. Um, I can level up these units, okay? And I'll just show you this. I'll waste it. And every five levels, I can strengthen it, okay? So now I've unlocked this. If I want to get this substat, I have to use a tuner. And these are finite. They're not finite. I, I think you can farm them long term. Um, but it is something that you're not going to have an infinite amount. So you want to make sure you get a good one. I'll do it. I'll show you. So I ended up getting base attack damage. Okay. Some extra attack damage. Sure. That works pretty good on my character. She does quite a few of them. Um, but I can still get the main stats. I can still level them up. And I can still get set bonuses going for free. But it is not... A system where it's completely energyless or resourceless, you still have to put in some some um, resources, and and that's that's totally fine. What's just really cool is that you have the ability to farm these creatures, these monsters, and be able to give rolls on these on these monsters for their artifacts. So it probably is to be expected that there is going to be some kind of like daily grind to all this. Just when it comes to, like, you, he just showed getting materials and stuff to level them up. But it's just cool that this system of just farming these monsters is something that you can do during the downtime when you don't have any, any energy. They are going to be finite and you can't progress uh, infinitely. 
So, when I look at all the different systems, this is not revolutionary. The, the overall game is going to have some similarities and familiar moments. I... All right, so this is what my... I think that in principle, in concept, the way they are going about the artifact system is not, like I said, in concept, revolutionary. It is a, at its core, an artifact system. But the way they are going about it, the way they are innovating it, is revolutionary because no one has ever thought of just using the monsters as relics themselves and then on top of that allowing the first monster in the slot to give you an extra or additional ability that in my opinion the way they are going about it and innovating it is revolutionary you're going to be like oh this is just more genshin and for some people that's really good and for me, I think because the combat is interesting enough, these enemies are interesting um, enough. Let me just switch to a different party because it'll be cooler. Um, I think that overall, all their different skills and like this is a gun guy. He feels like pretty cool. He's got some cool attacks. It's fun just using new characters. Yeah. And trying new things. And 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 I want to show you something really interesting. So let me just fight this enemy for a, uh, a little bit here. Um so I can show you this cool move. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting I'm getting shit on already. Nice. Okay. So I can use my animals and like go in here and attack. Pretty cool. But look at this. I can use her attack and use my other guy and she'll stay on the field. There's some really interesting things where you can trigger an attack and the other person stays on the field. Or this guy he will actually join in and just like appear and do an attack sometimes. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, what I didn't anticipate was with the combat, the the swapping feature and, and doing these little these little attacks. Like I'll, I'll just wait till it procs one. One second here. Maybe I have to use my ultimate. When it procs it, okay, I can summon in this other person. And, and switch to her and do like this this chain attack this combo attack i love the feeling of it it's such a simple thing yeah and like it makes it feel like it's constantly going have their own ability she has like a, a charge meter you you use your attacks and then you consume all the charge and she does this big nuke um everyone has their own vibe yeah this girl um you know she's a healer this girl you alternate between all your different attacks and then she does like a an aoe like venti alt kind of thing and you want to use them you want to play through them you want to use their their skills but then swapping out to the other people can also trigger different effects it can boost up your next unit's damage it could debuff the enemy all these different things and so you you kind of want to have each person on field do their combo and then you swap off and i don't know it just feels fun i've swapped teams 500 different times in genshin and that's the thing. I'm doing the same thing during my, uh, during my, uh, when I'm playing the game is I'm just trying out different characters because like he's saying, every character feels unique. I've enjoyed playing Yang Yang. I, I have this, uh, chick that I got the other day. I can't exactly remember her name, but she's a sword user as well. But her ability allows her to summon this like pinkish short, sort of for her other hand. And she just starts dual wielding her regular sword and this pink sword and combos off. And as you just keep on using her ability, she'll eventually just start just attacking every enemy in the vicinity. It's really, it's really cool. And then I also got uh, this other character I've been calling her Jen, who's a martial artist. Again, really cool. She's all about com combining her uh, regular basic attacks and then doing popping off of counters, and then she even generates shield a shield for your team. It like every character so far has felt or has felt unique, and it's just fun playing different characters. But for some reason, 
it feels very satisfying this game, and I don't know why. Zenless Zone Zero did similar stuff. You could swap between, they could do their, some attacks, but from minute one, Zenless Zone Zero felt like button mashing. A little bit. Like a little, a little bit. And from moment one in this one, I was having fun. The spectacle was there, but I think it's because the bosses can actually crush you if you're not playing well. Like, I was missing a bunch of the counters there. I still need to practice that stuff. Some of the enemies can absolutely dumpster on you, and, and these are arguably the easier versions. As you go to the world tiers, they get stronger, they get more aggressive, and in some of the other content, they get harder. And so, the combat is very fun. Switching between the characters is very fun. I like this, but it's using them against something that's also trying to kill me is what excites me. So I'm very excited about that. And that's the other thing, is that Zenless Zone Zero, again, is going to be under the umbrella of Hoyoverse. And I didn't get to try Zenless Zone Zero, but based on gameplay I saw, it its combat is okay, but it doesn't really challenge you. Genshin Impact, the only area you ever will feel challenged is in the spiral abyss and that's practically floor 11 and floor 12. if you're if you're an, if you are an end game player that's it the only challenge you're ever going to face in Genshin impact is floor 11 or if you're like really good floor 12. and trust me it doesn't take that it's not that hard to get really good at Genshin. the only other time is that is during the rare occasions they decide to throw a combat game mode at you other than that Genshin Impact will not challenge you and the only real combat mechanic besides combining elemental reactions is just dodging but half the time you don't even need to dodge you just gotta move <laughs> uh, and if you're using Zhongli then you'll arguably never have to move in this game the combat feels flushed out you have your basic attack, you have a heavy attack, you have your abilities, you have the ability from whatever monster you got on your first artifact slot. You have your you got the ability to dodge. And then the thing is though, the dodge you have a time window for it. And then you know on top of that, you have a counter system where you, if you time it right and you hit the enemy when it's got the goat circle around them, you will pop off and hit the counter and stun the enemy. There is a flushed out combat system that is just so fun to use in this game. And you're rewarded for basically getting good at it. And that's what I think players that are just frustrated at Genshin Impact for its lack of innovating its combat system is going to go to Wuthering Waves for when Wuthering Waves is officially released. Is... A combat system that rewards you for getting good at it. Um, I think that the overworld, the questing, all that stuff is is like, you know, pretty cool, pretty interesting. But I want to show you this really quickly. I'm gonna just go into my um my videos here quickly because I did a I did a recording here. Um, this is this is from earlier. Let me just move this over. Okay. This is from earlier. All right. It might be some spoilers. But if I look at this cutscene, if I look at what's going on, I don't think you can tell me like, oh, this is trash compared to Genshin. It's like, what? Uh, this looks insane. Do you know what I mean? That's good. Um, it might not be your favorite art style. It might not be the, <laughs> the best storytelling long term. But the cutscenes are very solid. And I want to talk about this very importantly because I know lore for some people isn't is 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 big. This this guy that that we're dealing with here, I ran into him earlier and he had a big discussion about this little town. And they were using wishes and this shepherd came. But the shepherd was ominous. It was this god that was that was taking advantage of these these sheep. All right, this flock. And they were sacrificing themselves to get their wishes, and it was this vicious trend. And eventually there was a black sheep, all right, that spoke up against it. And what did they want to do? They wanted to, to kill him and say, no, we want to keep doing this, this vicious cycle. And he, he told us this story. 
And I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. It's fine. Like, it's interesting lore. But we talked to him, and, she, and, and, and our character said, so were you the shepherd? And he says, no, I'm the black sheep. And so are you. And I was like, okay. I don't know what that means exactly. But then I ended up fighting him later on in the story. And I thought that this was pretty interesting, and it was a cool fight. And there was a situation where if he grabs you, he, like, does this crazy combo, like a fighting combo. It was cool. I love it. Like, if he if he hits you, you're going to be in some trouble. And um, it was fun. And then another phase started. I, I, I did some damage, and another phase started. And I want to talk about this because I think it's very important for this video. Number one, animations look really cool. Yeah. Number two, though, what pops out of this hole? What is that logo? What is that symbol? What are we seeing other than a black sheep, a black lamb? And I feel like even that homage to the earlier quest and talking about that is interesting. I think that it shows that they have some thought behind the story. I'm yeah. not going to pretend it's this amazing thing, but I would argue that some of Genshin's story is very boring and and that's the thing I see, like to touch on what he's saying. Yes, it's a, it's like taking a character design and going back and portraying lore based on this character design, or it could be the other way around, which is equally as good. Taking story and lore and applying it to character design, which I think is, like I said, equally as cool and as good. And if they're doing, if they're going to continue to do that, by it'll make the lore of the story feel more alive by showing these characters and aspects about them that calls back to previous story and lore. And I, I do don't get me wrong, Genshin when it's telling its Archon story or some of its character stories can do really good, and I and I'm. And I'll just speak specifically to uh, Archon, the Archon quest. For the most part, the Archon quests are really good. Sometimes they kind of drag a little bit, but for the most part, it's really good. But a lot of times when it comes to the world quest or even, God forbid, the fucking character stories, they just feel boring. And... More specifically, there were times during the character stories, and this this pains me the most, is that it's about characters that will never matter. For example, uh, I'll use Ayato's story. It's about just helping out two NPCs that are trying to get married, but both of their families don't agree. Or they just have political reasons for not wanting the marriage to go along while and eventually... Political reasons for why they think the marriage should go, go, go to go on, <laughs> and then Ayato is just caught in the middle of it, and then we're just being dragged along just because Ayato is part of it, and Ayato is not even the main point of the story, and it's just like why do I care? Why do I give a damn about these NPCs? I care. I'm here for the character, not. I'm not here for the character because the character happens to be here for the NPCs. And what was even worse than that was Nilu. Nilu's story quest is just helping out a girl who happens to be in her troupe of dancers. Whose dad, who's part of the academia, is trying to stop their uh, performances. And I'm only here because Nilu happens to be here. And Nilu is only... And, I'm, and this, this is only going on because Nilu has a fellow dancer in her troupe who's being, whose dad's being a dick. And I'm just like, well, this could easily be more interesting if Nilu, it was, if it was Nilu's father who was doing all this, because then that would make the story 10, 10 times more interesting because that creates a family dynamic between Nilu and her dad. But no, it's just some girl and her dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just things like that that ruin Genshin Impact storytelling because they want to focus sometimes more on NPCs than the characters themselves. And if Wuthering Waves can maybe flush out its story more, make the story have more 
intrigue and interesting dynamics between all the characters, I think they could have something good here. And I'm like, skip, 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 skip. And then at the very end of a quest, I'm like, oh, that was good. There's a crazy cutscene. Oh, that was good. And it might be the same here, but at least I'm seeing some inclination that they have some cohesion to the story. They have some interest in the story and um, I'm excited for it. I might still skip a whole bunch of it, but if there's some cool moments and some cool cutscenes, I think that that's a win. I'm not going to pretend it's this insane story that's just better than Genshin, but like at least it's not terrible. <laughs> and if it is, there's going to be a skip button for like everything. So it is what it is, but visually if we start looking at the cutscenes if we look at some of the stuff that's that's available in game you can't tell me this doesn't look good some no. of the music that pops in during these fights like it looks freaking awesome and yeah touch on cutscenes i do think that this this team this this game does nail cutscenes the cutscenes are pretty much as good as Genshin impact cutscenes animation looks amazing especially this animation that he's playing in the background right now I'm very is, impressed is good. Uh, with a lot of it. I think that the game is going to be good. And I think that for the first month or two, people are going to be shocked and hyped. And and and, and they are going to quit Genshin for a month. And they're going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm going all in in Withering Waves. And then they might quit. Because maybe they don't, they, they can't hold on to it. Maybe they can't hold on to the magic. But um, my, my vibe right now is, I think it'll be a fun game. It'll be something that, I personally will go all in on when it launches. I will be making so many guides. I see so much potential for it. And if it only lasts a month or two, it is what it is. But I see a game that I'm enjoying and I like. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ride that wave. I'm gonna ride that wave. Now, another final thing I do want to address is gotcha. Okay. okay. It's a gotcha game. Some people hate this, some people somehow love it. I hate it. I always hate it. I I don't know who I'm going to get, but at the same time, there's some magic to that as well because it's kind of like a roguelike game. I don't know who I'm going to get. I don't know when I'm going to get that weapon. I don't know who I'm going to get for my first free uh, five-star unit. And because of that and, and the adapting to that, it is kind of fun and it's novel. And I would say that the first month or two of these gacha games is when they're the most fun. When it's just dailies all the time, it starts to get less fun. And so it might be a flash in the pan. It might be just a quick thing that we enjoy. And maybe that's okay. But there's a few things is Kuro Games is known for being a little bit more um, generous. Free five star when PGR launched for global. Uh, quite a few pulls when it launched overall. In this one, you get a free five star, just like HSR off the normal banner. Like there's like a, the guaranteed one, yeah, uh, which is cool, and everything. But it it appears that they've done some things with the events and everything to help you get your account up and running relatively quickly. You can still get destroyed by the gotcha. There's still a 50/50 on this banner. Yep. But the weapon banner doesn't have a 50/50. On top of that hypothetically because of the the shop that's available um like the free the free pulls you got okay there we go Ooh, wow um there's free pulls every month that you can get from this on the normal banner the weapon banner and the character banner so hypothetically long term you should have some weapons even though you don't actually spend any money on the game or pull on that specifically over time you will eventually hit pity and it's going to be a long time but eventually you'll get some crazy weapon on this banner yeah and it's like oh that's amazing or you get a bunch of blues you know you get a bunch of blues it is what it is but i think that the systems overall look fine like it's it is what it is but there's going to be a lot of this like every other gotcha game yeah it's a, it's a gotcha game like you said it's it's one of those things you have a love hate relationship with it is cool that you that the, the the event weapon banner will it will always be guaranteed to be the weapon. That way you don't have to worry about being burned trying to wish for that weapon and you end up getting some shitty standard five star weapon. Like in Genshin. <laughs> um but yes, it is a gotcha game, so you're gonna have to live with some issues or typical things. 50-50 on the event five star character banner. There is a um, starter banner, 50 pulls, and you'll get the uh, five-star character. 
a, a, one of the standard five star characters. And then when it comes to the um, standard five star banner character, it's your typical five star standard banner character. You're going to get one of the five star standard banner characters. But there is another cool thing. When it comes to the standard five star weapon banner, you basically select a path toward one of those five star weapons and you'll get that five star weapon. So there is ways that they try to go about making the gotcha system tolerable to the point where it is more helpful to the player. Whereas like, let's say in Kitchen Impact, it was a pain in the ass, <laughs> especially with the weapon banner before they implement, implemented the epitomized path for the weapon banner. The weapon banner is still a pain in the ass, even with the epitomized path, because you have to lose two 50-50s to even guarantee yourself to get the five-star weapon. Like I said, whereas in this game, you are guaranteed to get that five-star weapon when you wish on the banner. What sets it apart for me or at least has some potential is with the normal wishes, with the free pulls that you get, that's one thing. However, you start putting all the other normal pulls in, cool, free five-star weapon. They're not the best weapons, but still it is, it's like one more thing. And, and I don't know exactly what will be in the game for the launch, but hypothetically there could be more because there's nothing on here that says like pre-order pulls. And, 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 a lot of these gotcha games do do that. I haven't seen anything about pre-registrations, pre-order. How many people have, have signed up? We got 5 million signups. Here's a free five-star. Nothing. I haven't seen anything like that. And so that could still be coming on top of all these different things. There's a free character you can get from doing the Abyss type stuff. And, and, and like, I don't know. I think, I think you can get your account up and running relatively simple. Yeah. And if you want to throw five bucks at the battle pass or whatever, then, you know, do your thing. But I think I'll probably play it free to play because I just like that vibe i don't like spending money it ruins the game for me um but i'm sitting on i think withering waves is going to be good i have a feeling it's going to be good people are complaining about the difficulty even though no one is in the end game yet no one has any idea what the end game looks like yet officially that is true i've been hearing things about the difficulty and yes right now and i'm mixed about it Right now, the difficulty is average. Some of the bosses can stomp on you if you let them stomp on you. Or if you make too many mistakes and you're dodging or your counters. You can, you can get stomped on. But also, if you just, if you're like already like treating this beta like the, the actual release of the game and you're zeroing in on one DPS character and you're just building that specific DPS character, oh yeah, you're going to stump on everything as long as you're doing your dodges and your counters correctly. But like Imtash said here, no one is really at endgame yet. So it's kind of hard to decide or judge, I should say, like what endgame will look like when it comes to difficulty until we get to that point. Um, people are complaining about the story. Maybe it's trash. For me, I don't care. I don't like Genshin Impact a lot of the time because it's so much yapping. It's not interesting to me. I do not want to go on a date with Ayaka. I do not care even 1%, but some people love that. Genshin is not for me. When I started that game, I thought it was going to go in a completely different direction, and it is just over time time and time again said no 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 this is not for you we will make a card game before a new boss we will make hangouts before anything it's not for me and withering waves might not be for you but if you're someone like me that likes combat yeah i'm hoping that they nail it i i, I have a, a vibe a feel that they're going to to nail it and if they don't that sucks but for right now, optimism is higher than expected. I was worried about it. I was nervous about it, but I can't wait. The other thing I want to discuss, the final thing is, we don't know when it's going to launch. That's true. So if we're looking at this stuff and it's like, oh, this and here's the thing is, we don't even know how long this beta is going to last. The last time I checked, 
they haven't even put an end date on the beta. So this beta is, as far as I know, is going on for the foreseeable future. So we don't even know the end of this beta. We do not know when the official launch is going to be for the game. Based on everything I'm seeing in the game right now, I see some things that they still have probably some work to do on improving, like just flushing out the open world, maybe making things feel a little bit more vibrant, and then doing some tuning on certain characters. Like, for example, I think they could... I like Sen Sunhua's like, combat style, but I feel like her animations don't really make too much sense. There are a lot of times she's swinging her sword, but her sword is still sheathed. <laughs> and then there's sometimes characters' animations. Somehow, like, for example, you will see one sword character go to a, make an attack. And then when they go to go back to their resting animation and sheath their sword or something, they actually don't have their sword in their hand. <laughs> so there is still some work that can be done on animations making the world feel more vibrant and alive kind of I, I think they should probably add more depth to the field of view to make the world again to add to that liveliness of the world I, so there's still some things what basically to my point there's still a lot of things that I've seen so far that could be improved on but for the most part I think we're looking at almost a finished game all I see, uh, the things I'm listing are just minor tweaks to improve the game. This looks really good. Yeah. Well, it, it might launch in a month, but it also might launch in like, it might launch in like October because that's when their, their like licenses do or whatever it's called. So all this stuff might still be iterated upon and they, they've done dev talks about how much they've changed things. They might make the, the, the map more dense. Maybe they up the difficulty of some of these bosses in the early game. I don't know what they do. I have I have no idea. Um, but if, if, if they cook for another eight months and they, they make it even better. Damn. Damn, boy. It's a Genshin killer. But yes, I, I think I'm for the most part agreeing completely with Mtash's take. As a combat player myself, who enjoys just game, like just gameplay in general, that's why I was first first interested in Genshin Impact. I was right there with Imtash, and in fact, I I, don't, I never even brought this up before. It was Genshin. It was Imtash's video on Genshin Impact that made me want to try Genshin Impact. All those years ago, I watched a video. I can't remember the name of it. In fact, it was this video right here. I believe it was Genshin Impact Review Should You Play It by Imtash. If I recall, this was the video that I saw and I was like, this, this game looks good. I, I want to try it. Open world, anime, characters look nice. And so I tried it, and I, I loved Genshin Impact, but I was in the same boat as Imtashed when I realized that even though this world looks beautiful, looks amazing, it makes you feel like you're in an anime, like in, in a general anime, a fantasy anime. And the characters are cool. The characters are, for the most part, interesting. The world is always evolving. And the combat is really good. The game just doesn't go anywhere besides the story and the map. <laughs> the combat, though, is what I'm specifically referring to. The combat just does not go anywhere past the spiral abyss. And when you want to test everything that you're building on when it comes to your characters, your artifacts, your weapons, your leveling up your characters, their talents... And mastering combinations of teams, the only the only area that you will at least be challenged a little is pretty much. I know I said floor eleven, but if you're if you're really trying to master that the combat in the game, floor twelve will be the only area you will ever feel a challenge. 
And that's it. That is absolutely it. And this is why I want Wuthering Waves to pop off. I want Wuthering Waves to pop off. I want Wuthering Waves to be a challenge to Hoyoverse and their Genshin Impact team, specifically for the reason of competition. I want Genshin Impact to feel challenged, to feel a struggle for their community, because I want them to feel like they need to step it up. And to a degree, who knows? Maybe Genshin Impact won't care. And if they don't care, then that will tell us everything we need to know. <laughs> so with that being said, definitely, definitely head over to Mtash's channel. Hit, a like, hit the like button on his video. Hit the subscribe button on his video. I'm going to link the video that we were watching when I started the video. And while you're at it, hit that like button for my video. Definitely subscribe to my channel. It'll, I appreciate it. It'll help us grow a community over here, help uh, build the channel. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for hanging out. And I'll catch you guys later.